Hey church family, I want to talk to you about our day of prayer and fasting. On the last Wednesday of every month, we want to be encouraging you to commit the day to prayer and fasting. In this little video, I just want to talk to you about fasting. Maybe you're new to the idea of fasting. And so what is fasting? I would say that perhaps the best description is this. Fasting is a physical expression of a spiritual longing, a physical expression of a spiritual longing. So on Mission Sunday, Daryl Bach uh, preached to us from Ephesians 1 and 2 and mentioned this amazing scripture. So the Apostle Paul is praying for Christians, and this is what he prays for. He prays that, they, uh, that God may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, and that having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you, what are the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of His power toward us who believe. There's so many amazing things in that passage. For me, when I read that, as I read His prayer, for me and for you, I think to myself, man, does that represent my Christian life? Do I really sense this immeasurable power at work in my life, this immense hope, this glorious riches and inheritance? Does that describe my Christian life? And almost always I come to the end of that going, well, no, not really. And there's a longing, there's a longing, there's a, a hunger and a thirst to experience more of the Christian life that is described in verses like this. Well, fasting is an outward physical expression of an inner spiritual longing like this, a longing for more. And there's lots of these kinds of practices in the church. You'll be familiar with a couple of them. For example, baptism is an outward physical expression involving water that uh, symbolizes inner new birth. Communion is an outer physical expression that symbolizes inner renewal of our covenant with Jesus. And in a similar way, fasting is that idea. It's not on the same level as those things, but it's still an outward expression of something on the inside. And in the case of fasting, what's happening on the inside is a recognition, a hunger for more. So what better way to express an internal hunger than with a literal, physical hunger. That's what fasting is, this outward expression, a physical expression of a spiritual longing. There's a lot more that I could say about what fasting is. And if you look at the, the guide that we've put out, there's some reading for you to do if you're interested in that. But I want to carry on and talk to you about why we are particularly fasting at this point in the life of our church. So the whole reason we've been doing this sermon series through the book of Ezra is because we recognize that in these particular challenging times that we're living in, God is wanting to do a work of transformation in our lives. He's wanting to use this challenging time to shape us and transform us. And we've already seen in Ezra just some of the ways that he wants to do that. So right in the beginning, we read how God stirred up the hearts of people to go and serve Him in a, in a new way. Uh, we saw in chapter 3 how God offers the opportunity for rebirth, for starting again, for renewal, personal and corporate. Uh, just recently, we looked at the challenge of spiritual mediocrity and how God, perhaps in this season, is trying to shake us up out of that spiritual mediocrity. And by the way, we're going to come to later in Ezra, a point where Ezra himself prayed and fasted for physical protection. And all of these things that we've already learning in our journey through Ezra are things that connect deeply to this idea of fasting. Because again, you may be either in a place where you realize God is using these circumstances to stir up your heart to deeper service or sacrifice for Him, or perhaps He's giving you the sense of this opportunity of starting again and what that might look like, uh, or perhaps you are needing protection or provision in that sense, or even just generally, I think all of us sense 
that perhaps at the least, God is wanting to shake us up out of spiritual mediocrity. And fasting is such a great way to tap into those things that we believe that God is doing already in our lives at this time. So that's what fasting is. That's why we want to fast particularly now. I suppose the next thing is how do we fast? So there are tons of examples in the Bible of people fasting. And if you read through the list of those who fasted, it kind of functions as a who's who in the Bible, right? Everybody who's somebody (laughs) engaged in the practice of fasting. But what we don't have is particular detail of how they fasted. And I think that's deliberate. I think it's because we're not supposed to get caught up on the mechanics of fasting. We're supposed to really just be drawn to the motive and the heart behind it. Otherwise, it could become something like a ritual. You do this, this, and this, and it's like there's a formula, and the output of that is some kind of spiritual renewal. And it's not that at all. And so there's not really a lot of detail about exactly what to do, but the heart of it is really simple. A physical expression of a spiritual longing that is hunger, (laughs) saying, In essence, fasting is going hungry. So it's depriving yourself of food uh, and drink except for water for a particular period of time. What we're suggesting in this fast, perhaps as a starter, is a sunrise to sunset fast. So you have your last meal before the sun is up and you can eat again once the sun is down. So in winter, that's a lot easier, right? Essentially, that means skipping a meal, skipping lunch. Um, That's perhaps one of the easiest way to start with fasting. If you want to take that a step further, you could skip dinner and maybe only or maybe only have dinner after our prayer meeting at the end of that day. Uh, But either way, it involves just abstaining from food and drink for a certain period of time. Again, in our handout, there is a lot more information about how you can fast. One thing to, uh, to be sure about is make sure that through the day you're not just fasting from food or drink, but you're also praying. I've heard it said before that fasting without praying is just a hunger strike. Right or a diet. Right? This is not. This is not that. And I perhaps wouldn't go that far because I think on its own it still is this physical expression of a spiritual longing that has merit. But I would say, when you're fasting, you will pray with an intensity and focus that I don't think you will do otherwise. So don't miss this opportunity to really be in prayer. And again, we've given you some guidelines on what you can be praying for through the day. And I want to close with this. In Matthew chapter 6, uh, Jesus talks about fasting. So, in fact, he speaks about the religious leaders who love to fast and make a big show about it, tell everybody that they're fasting, and he says, hey, they've got their reward. In other words, people think that they're all spiritual. That's their reward. He says, but you, when you fast, which is interesting because he's saying he expects his followers to fast. He says, when you fast, don't be like them. Instead, fast in secret. So, don't make a show about it. Make sure you're... You look normal on the outside. But then he says this, and your father who sees everything will reward you. And that's really interesting to me. See, fasting, I don't want you to get the impression that fasting is a requirement. Right? It's not some requirement that you have to do in order to be spiritual or in order to prove your spirituality. It's not a requirement. Fasting is not about a requirement. It is about a reward. Because at the end of it, you can expect reward. And it's not the earthly kind of reward. That's what he was speaking against with the religious leaders. It's a, it's a different kind of reward. At the very least, the reward is more of Jesus. And I want to ask you, does that sound like something you want more of? You're sensing right now more of Jesus, more of these, the immeasurable greatness of his power at work in your life. I do. And if that's you, then why don't you join us as we pray and fast together. Hope to see you at our prayer meeting at the end and hope you'll be joining us as we pray and fast together.